Welcome back to our combing through the executive function skills. This is our day four. It is actually our fifth module, but our first was a review of the eight executive function skills that we have been examining one by one but we have seen repeatedly how they will function together in many ways. And so there's a lot of repetition and overlap. This day is one that is a little bit of a break in the cerebral feelings. It's got feelings, but it is more about getting things done and that has a sense of energy and movement and feeling like our, now we're getting somewhere. Maybe if all of this comes together, this could actually produce something that if I feel like I need to strengthen, I want to develop, whether it's being a better mom, better dad, maybe progressing, as a teacher or in business, getting a, an advanced title, whatever it is, what is required in any action plan, or if you were a project manager or a people manager, would be some organizing and planning. And this is a key executive function that helps you stay very present in your general purpose of what you are all about, what matters to you, and then the specific purpose that you are purposely and deliberately walking toward. And that's the action, that's the energy but it takes planning. And so let's just dive into what actually is organizing planning and what we can do with it and how it fits with some of these other skills. Being able to problem solve and manage future oriented tasks or functions and that could be activities that have a schedule to them, or it might be something that would require a little more pivoting as you go because it might involve people. If it involves people, people sometimes are unpredictable and we are going to be called upon to adjust. So while you're staying in the present, as you're looking at this big picture, that helps you feel grounded in who you are, why this is important, and keeps your focus on not just the purpose, but the creation of the steps that will take you toward the actualization of a future goal, a benefit by feeling grounded and having a sense of purpose will assist in that deliberate walking toward your purpose. So some basic steps, what has to be done? What is it? Very simple. Or is it? What does this activity or task or project require? Oh, that already sounds like some planning. We have to require stuff. Well, let's see. What needs to be done? Well, that goes back to assess what is to be done. Well, yeah, but if you look at what is 
planned and then you look at what might be required or who what needs to be done then takes you to the who needs to be involved and where will this all happen sometimes we we find the kid in ourselves thinking well it'll all work itself out and sometimes it does and sometimes it's fun to do that to flip the coin and go left and that's going to determine what happens next sometimes it's fun to be spontaneous but if you have a specific objective in mind you could just by chance end up wherever it was you specifically wanted to go if you flip the coin it might be 50 50. i'm not real sure about all of those odds but i think the organizing and planning that we're looking at strengthening relearning or learning and developing deepening these are different steps that have application even to organizing and planning our words even our emotions so that our emotions are validated that's sort of a plan to validate them and not leapfrog over that and our thoughts are thoughts but we have them they and the emotions don't confirm factually hypotheses we state but we still have those feelings but organizing and planning probably leans more toward facts accuracy what's realistic not to be the gloomy cloud that it sounds like oh my gosh measure twice cut once are you one of those why can't we just make this recipe just kind of a little of this a little of that you can and there's a time for that but if you want to get from a starting point to the finish then it probably is going to include a little bit more accuracy and facts so number five looks at what sort of skills are necessary do you know them if you have a staff or team members or family members on board do they know them that's not a uh oh no we don't i guess we can't do it everything probably could be thought of as knowable or learnable but then that would be another step to add in that would already be a revision but it would get us to the next step but that would be a fact that if something has to be known in order to get to the next step that would need to be taken care of possibly while something else is happening but if it's holding things up then there might be a pause that might be measured in terms of how long it will take to learn and once it's learned then you shift on okay so now you could certainly think of a specific objective where you you might have even been contemplating that you would like to start something and then maybe even have an idea of when you would like to complete it so when you think in those terms and bear that in mind you might jot down along some of these steps and they don't have to be accurate exactly this will be sort of a launching pad but planning toward the future and completion as you hear those words you stay grounded but then you already have that forward motion the energy 
there is movement and you can feel a little momentum starting to build. That's why having the steps, even if, let's say, number two is, uh, I always have to do that thing. I don't, but you think, yes, you do. But you know, you've got it. You do it. The momentum keeps going. You don't skip over it. You move to three, you do four. So write some of those specific steps down. Whatever is involved in moving through the process, and we often say respecting process, it's not going to magically happen. That gets us realistic about looking at tool for the job of time it takes to do something, skills required, how many people, budget, all of those things count. And it's nice to have a little spirit of, well, no matter what happens, we're going to get it done. But we also want to have something secure that we can look at if we feel that magical I'm excited about this and it'll just work itself out. How's it going to work itself out if we've hit an obstacle that will remove some of those big blocks where you might be at risk of, well, I don't know if I want to work on this right now. I think I'll start something else. And so, Part of this feeds into what we were discussing in the prior module of the importance of completing things. There's a little rush of dopamine. There is excitement. There is a feeling of, I made a commitment. I respected the commitment. I completed it. It may have a connection or a commitment to others. Bottom line, guess what? You invest in yourself, you respect yourself. Organizing, being realistic, being reasonable, not boring. Might sound a little stodgy, but how can the task be broken down into smaller, more manageable steps? Successive approximations, actually, you think of those in these little lumps, these little incremental steps, every one of those gets completed. So there's these many, we did it, we did it, we did it. So there's energy there, a little rush of dopamine of we did it, we completed it, we completed it, even if there's, oh, I didn't know we had to have those materials. You might be able to have this happening while those materials are coming or being retrieved and then not feel you've lost that momentum. You might have to wait. That's why we have revision built into every plan, but you still have the success of approximations, the incremental steps, one, two, three, and maybe, yes, you added four or five. So as you're moving through the, the steps, but also you are assessing the bigger picture of what time is looking like. So that's where you have your measurable, the SMART goals, the acronym SMART specific, measurable. That always sounds stodgy too, that, well, we'll wing it, you know, well, you could, but then if you measure twice, cut once, you might not have to take that break and go get some more plywood. So. 
when you think about that and you think about, is it realistic? Is it attainable? Is it maybe too simple? Is it rewarding? You finally do get to the time bound. Well, we, we readjusted because we ordered materials and they were delayed or we readjusted and we did something else. So a little swap of blocks that you're doing when the materials were delayed, we did something else that didn't need the materials in order to move forward. So being creative can be a part of it. Understood that let's just keep adjusting, not just for the sake of adjusting, but you really do benefit from feeling that energy and knowing you keep seeing the word completion, completion, finish. Wow. Even if you kind of think, well, I'm having fun. This is really great. I don't know if I want to finish it. Well, once it's finished, though, you've mastered something, you've learned something to the point of mastery. You're never done learning, so you don't have to worry about that part. And you will have something accomplished. Having an organized action plan does help everyone who's involved and affected, including maybe your accountant who's monitoring the budget. And that's a measurable that you take into account that might have to be adjusted, or you might even find some cost savings. So either way, there's always going to be a little bit of back and forth. And that flexibility is built into the plan that keeps you calm it's not going to startle anyone so that emotions get in the way. It might be disappointing if something's delayed, but it might be a big score if you say, well, it was delayed, but we didn't let the grass grow beneath our feet. We took that day and did something else or it rained. So we couldn't do the outdoor part, but we did the indoor part. So, that keeps you from feeling overwhelmed. If steps are working well and tasks are completed, that's wonderful, but they are more manageable. You have more of a resilience finding tendency about yourself and the team. If you've built in that we might have to adapt to a few surprises, some unknowns, that's probably something to expect. We're not predicting that, but it could happen. Then you're better equipped to identify which function or step might not be working properly. Something might have to be readjusted in your plan. And this would be a revisable step. Then resumption of the process sends you to where you want to go, the point of completion of being done. Now, backtracking just a bit. When you think of that big picture of having a project, organizing, planning, having a team, bringing people together, reaching the point of completion, getting it done, maybe starting to get excited about the next step. One of the reasons that we are putting these modules together is just in case some of the basic strengths you had just don't quite have the sharpness 
they don't come as easily. They might feel, as we've said, that not just with COVID, not just with long COVID, not just with any condition that's medical, it can be fatigue, it can be something very positive, new child, it can be new marriage, it can be new job, but whatever it is, it has the potential to, if not weaken the muscles that prior to whatever the concern is, what we just went through, it might have been, eh, yeah, every once in a while I had to kind of keep that pace, keep organized. I didn't mind it. It didn't stress me out. I wasn't really all that tired at the end of the day. You might be now. And part of what we're aiming to do here is gradually strengthen. This coordinates with perhaps if you're having any physical slowness, meaning I don't feel like the same person. I feel like a completely different person or I keep forgetting things. I can't remember if I fed the cat. I can't remember if I, what were they going to say? That starts to feel scary and you could, and we just really are aiming to help you with this. You could say, I don't think I can do that project anymore. And you can relearn this and you might see it as doing it in a different way. And that might make you sad, but it's relearnable. It is remarkable how you will find a motivation building if you step by step practice areas that you might have this one and I can, yeah, I, I remember if I got the cat, I remember, but then there might be more of an emotional response. If something unexpected occurred, you might pop off and then say something to someone and, oh boy, that person's probably not even going to want to stick with this project. I didn't mean to, I just not myself. So here we have some basic exercises that have been around a long time. And the citation is at the bottom of the second page after this one. There are different of uh, their countless apps and brain strengthening exercises when someone has a stroke, when someone has perhaps fluid that has to be drained from the brain and they feel much, much better and much closer to how they felt, but they have to do some work to sharpen the skills. Sometimes I've seen people take a basic Excel class, Excel number two, Excel number three. I didn't know there were that many. And you know, whatever it is, they found this area is really, it's one of those I just can't quite get comfortable with. Or I'm starting to hear people sort of complain, even maybe people who like me, like maybe my family or my partner or my friends. And I feel dismissed because I guess they're human too. And maybe they're kind of sad because I used to be that person who didn't have to work quite as hard to remember things. So let's go ahead and embrace that sadness and 
if you do and you think about it and you validate it and you really allow yourself a little bit of grief and yes it it isn't fair and that's not stomping your foot and I'm special. I'm the only one who went through this, whatever this is, whether it's COVID or anything else. But it may even be statistically inequitable because it defies probabilities, but whatever it is. And yes, even if it was something that you did, that you made a choice, you got hurt, something happened. People sometimes have a funny reaction to that. And sometimes the person who's hardest on self is self. We have to go ahead and embrace that. And I'm sorry if that happened, but we can relearn. It may seem like silly exercises, even going to the neurologist. I've had people come back saying, why didn't he ask me that? That was about the silliest thing. Or I knew who the president was, but as soon as he asked me, I didn't know who the president was. You know? So it's funny how exercises and thinking, why should I do all of that? I don't, I don't believe in that stuff. And, and this is just an example. There truly are brain teasers and all sorts of games and apps. And I'll swear some of the video games have to be strengthening something because there's some pretty smart engineers out there who really get anxious if they their machine goes out. I, I guess it's not that machine, whatever you call that. I guess you can tell I don't really play those games, but I've seen it. really smart people. And they even get a little down because it sharpens their brain and it really is missed. And then they aren't quite themselves. So this, this isn't new. But it's okay to feel that way first. And every once in a while, you're going to feel that way, particularly if anyone sort of gives up on you. But you're not trying to show anybody anything. You're really just saying, I have fallen off my fitness regimen on occasion and I couldn't even lift my wife's suitcase and she laughed at me. But guess what? I rebuilt my muscles. I think they're even stronger than they were. They bounced back. I wonder if this could bounce back. Or you might say, I never was very good at that. Well, okay. Then let's see if we can learn it. Okay, so again, very simple exercises here, just an idea. These are really looking at ways to strengthen the organizing and planning muscles. It's, it's nice to have a person, a helper, a friend, a family member who will read the instructions you can record it or you can re-listen to this, but if you have someone who's there, it is nice to have that person as a member of your team of horses who are there to support you. It's not you're depending on them because on this, only self is the solution. And as I say, only you can run a marathon. So you will do it. You're investing in yourself, but 
if you have a commitment to others, even in goal setting, when the goal needs to be your goal in order for you to approach it, then it might be nice to have someone there. If you don't, maybe it's your cat or your dog. And maybe you'll remember whether or not you fed them. I think they'll probably remind you if you didn't. Okay. So let's look at the number sequencing. And that's one that if you have ever had a visit with, it could be your primary care doctor, but neurologist will sometimes test some basic cognitive skills and it sometimes feels like are they trying to just trick me and not really but they're they really are doing a very very quick check to see about maybe holding information you know working memory stuff that we have integrated throughout and we have that final module down the road but this this is listed by levels so that implication is that it does maybe become more increasingly difficult but that may not be true for you know one person to the next but let's go through this and see what happens and then you can decide i think that we could probably drum up all sorts of brain games that would probably be even more fun. And heaven knows there's an app for everything, as they say. So let me see if I can phrase it as I'm your person. And so I'm going to tell you this. Write the numbers 1, 2, 10 in sequence. If that's too difficult, here are 10 numbers written on individual squares of paper, so I can't hand you that. And order those squares, order the numbers by sight. So either way, your person could say the numbers, or if you are tired, or it's been a stressful day or week, or if you just like to try it by organizing the squares and having those on hand, that might be helpful. You might be able to do some of that when you're just working on this on your own. And so that's to be repeated several times, and you increase the number span as yes, you get better and better and better. You could also use the alphabet and the days of the week, the months of the year for any kind of sequencing. This, by the way, is something that is a strategy for anxiety that pops up. And for one person, anxiety is answered back to you by breathing or another person they say don't tell me to breathe or i'm going to start hyperventilating but it's funny how having your thoughts on a channel that you're focusing on that's not horribly challenging but sequencing is one of those things so this has a dual purpose where you could use that and some of, not just these exercises, but maybe some of these challenge areas in the executive function skills could make you feel creepy and not like yourself and upset and yeah, anxious. And so you might say, well, you know what, I'm going to have to all do that level one. I'll just say, I'm going to count, maybe, maybe I'll count in Spanish, or maybe I'll, I'll shake it up a little bit, but you're already going towards something. And that's the point. See, that is your resilience finding. You're already getting creative. 
you're finding application for a pretty basic exercise for some other purpose. Maybe even a little child who's learning their numbers. So this could go in all directions. Level two, count first by odd or even numbers or count by tens. Okay, that takes a little bit more. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so it's probably something you did. I don't know what elementary school grade that would be, but counting by odd numbers, even numbers, then counting by tens. I've seen that on the children's show Brain Candy. So that must be something that is still done. And and it's, it's tough sometimes. And it, COVID or not, we get a little lax when we don't do something, even though we might be high performing in different areas. Begin by providing the initial four digits in the sequence. You can write it or it can be spoken and have that repeated several times, alter alternating the directions. So that gets a little bit tricky. That reminds me of the kind of tap dancing that oh, I could do it this way, but I can't do this way. Or Ginger Rogers said, yeah, I do everything he does. I do it backwards. So odd direction versus even direction. Level three. Here are the first four digits of a sequence, and it's a set number that is added or subtracted each time. Okay, so three, seven, 11, 15. You get the picture. So you're adding four to each number to get the next number in the sequence. This too is something you'll see on the children's shows where the child, they'll usually use something they're interested in like cars and trucks and they'll count things and maybe do patterns, but they're learning and they're learning in the way they learn best. So some of this is just plain old numbers. Some is more visual. Some is auditory. Okay, so level four, you do the same as we just did. But this time, if I'm the person, your helper, I'm not telling what operation to perform. Mm -hmm. what? Okay, so note to self, don't tell them what is to be subtracted or added. That's what that means. Okay, you might even have to train the trainer on this. So this will encourage you to figure out what has to be done. And that's kind of a little bit more fun in a way a little more challenging and it really does sort of take it to another level where you really do find yourself saying, wow, that I had to kind of think on that one a little bit more, but that's strengthening the brain. Level five, add multiplication to the operations that can be done. So, you create new and more challenging sequences, such as successive square numbers. Ooh, feeling like we're going back to math class. Hmm, let's see. All right, one, four, nine, 16. 16 is always kind of nice. There's something very 
chunkity chunk chunk about that. So at level six, create a pattern of arithmetic operations, such as adding six, then subtracting four. So you've got six, subtract four, two, and then you go to eight and back down to four. And that way you're starting to, you know, the helper is having you identify, ah, I see what you're doing. Okay. I caught on and laugh about it. I mean, I think if there's no humor in any of this, there's not a lot of breathing for one thing. And, and it isn't funny in the humorous way of, gee, I'm glad I forgot how to do a lot of things I used to be able to do now, but you're doing something and investing in yourself so that you are going towards something. We're not trying to say, I want to be like I was, I don't know. No, you're going towards something. Even if you go back and live in your hometown, you're really, they say you can't go back. You can go back, but you are taking a developed you. You have had other experiences, lived other places, maybe went to school somewhere, met lots of people, learned a bunch of stuff. Okay. And let's move on. And last, we've got just a few more exercises. These are referred to as auditory exercises, also listed in levels. And you might try them and see if they help at all, if they might even get you thinking about something else that would be helpful, where you could strengthen maybe even some areas where for some reason this part comes quite naturally, but this part doesn't. And we might want to try to figure out why that is, but to say, well, then I will focus on this and there might be a different way of doing it, it might be more fun. And I think it would, again, might as well have a little fun with it. It might be if you have a child around or a grandchild, that would be the best to have them help you and teach you. And I think they'd get a kick out of it. So level one. So if I read a string of numbers to you for 20 to 30 seconds, Okay, and pause in between numbers at least two seconds. Okay, so ask you what to write down the number two every time you hear that number, or simply make a mark every time you hear the number two and read aloud. So record how many correct marks are made. Okay. And so on that one, you would probably need to have someone help you. And there probably, again, are different applications that have an automatic person who would do that for you. We may even come up with a few of our own. So level two, read letters of the alphabet. And those would be read at random. And you would be asked to raise your hand as you hear a particular letter. So they said, try a K. Okay. Level three, raise your finger when either of two letters 
is set. So that could be the person who would randomly pick out the B and the T. And so you would raise a finger when either of those two letters is set. And so that will help you to see how you're taking in auditory information translating it and pulling it into your memory and over time this would sharpen and it might become more accelerated it might become more difficult you might have a level 45 by the end of it all so at level four you would be asked to raise a finger when a specific number sequence is read aloud, such as when a two follows a six. So that you can see that's, oh, okay, that's that's a little different. So when a two follows a six, when a two follows a six. You, but did you say six? So, that, so quick working memory, but you could even challenge yourself by asking the person to start kind of slow and maybe speed it up and have a little fun with that too because that one that could get kind of funny and you might turn the tables on the person and say well if you think it's so funny let me do it on you and they might say well i sure see that i'm getting tired and i, I that's why i forgot it and that's quite possible it can be for many reasons that we just don't track as well as we once did, or as we discussed taking the big exam, we might realize that we've fallen behind in our timing and we not slow down as we've thought might be helpful. We rush and we miss and skip over or just incorrectly answer the extremely simple third grade math questions. That is what anxiety can do, not giving your brain adequate oxygen, and really just feeling almost that paralysis of, I cannot believe this. I mean, I was prepared and here I am, I don't know what happened. And it's probably partially the pressure of, this is so important. So the nice things about these exercises, it's important what you are doing to strengthen. The actual exercises are not, they build something or they check something and you might even be able to report back to your primary care doctor or if you have a neurologist and to kind of note this sort of thing that for some reason I can do this, but I trip up over this. And they study this, you know, they might be able to give you some ideas as to you might emphasize this. Sometimes this will help strengthen that. Okay, so once again, the person's going to ask you to raise a finger when a specific number sequence is read aloud, such as when a two follows a six. And then you can also do that in written form by creating a sheet with lines of numbers. That's it. And I will look forward to seeing you again as we move forward to our next executive function skill. I appreciate your time so much. And again, I really empathize with anyone who feels that they just aren't quite what they were for whatever reason, even if it's just in a given week, but you, are able to relearn, strengthen, 
build muscles and we are here to help you. And if you have any questions, if you are looking for any resources, there are some programs, some studies, and I imagine some clinical trials eventually will start popping up and we'll do our best to try to point you in the direction wherever you are. We're in New York, but something about the internet seems to take you anywhere. So let us know if there's something we can do to help. I'm Dr. Cam. I will see you soon. Thanks so much.